Welcome to the Dream Team Academy podcast, where we help you make your business dreams come true. And a great hello and welcome to my wonderful guest all the way from Canada today. She is living in the frozen winter of Quebec. And um, I would like to introduce you to this incredible lady who is more than a mindset coach, more than an entrepreneur, more than a wife and a mother. She combines to me somebody who takes life and molds it into the shape she wants and lives her dreams. And that is why I would like to introduce you to Marty Brookson today on the Dream Academy podcast. Welcome, Marty. Oh, merci, merci. Thank you so much, Lisa. Wow, what a great introduction. You almost have me blushing. I love that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me here with you today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm so grateful because I always like to go- come on, you know, and um, well, talk with you and shed some light. So I'm looking forward to your questions today. I, I have... Well, you didn't, I just want everybody to know because I think it's important. This is unprepared. I have no clue what Lisa is going to ask me. So I'll just be speaking from the heart, which is the best thing to do anyway, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, people that know me know that I'm not the queen of detail. I'm the queen to do, do everything on the fly. So I was eating I was eating cereal. I'm like, hmm, I'm still I'm spitting cereal. That's not good. I was, I was <laughs> snacking in between podcasts. Um so I, I tend to like to do everything that's real and authentic, just like what happens. And I find if I put if I actually prepare too much, the interviews don't go as well. So I kind of like to just see what what comes up for me. But I'd like to start, if I may, with a little bit of your journey. Now, Merti, you've you've been an entrepreneur all your life, but even I don't actually know your beginning story. So how did you end up not just being a normal employee? I mean, how did you decide you wanted to go into the coffee shop business or I don't even know if you did any entrepreneurial stuff before that. Tell me the basic story of how you got where you are today, just the graphics of it. Well, imagination creates reality, right? Like I really believe in that. And I've always been a big dreamer. Like I have this thing going on, Lisa, that I always say I am magic. And um, people think that's weird. Maybe like this go with her magic and magic. But the thing is when you feel that way, you just start to have a magical life, right? Because you do magical things, you pay attention to stuff and it just materializes. So I am one of those funny persons, you know, and my friends will tell you this, that I guess I was blessed always with this, I don't know, this 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 fairy idea that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna make my life at it, as it is. And I had a very fairy tale life. I was actually born in Holland. My parents are from different countries. So my mom is Dutch and my dad is from St. Martin in the Caribbean. And I remember very clearly living in Holland and watching there was this bounty commercial. This is very funny, just to show you that I've been manifesting for a long time. <laughs> Even though I was not doing it maybe very consciously at that point um, or didn't understand the process. But I remember watching the Bounty commercial, which is a commercial. I don't know. It's this chocolate bar with cooking it mm-hmm. inside. Uh-huh. And it was on this beautiful tropical island. And I was looking at that. And right now, I really know the sensation when I really, I guess it's the want, the desire, you know, that they talk about that feeling. I really know this feeling. So I remember watching that when I was young and I was like, oh my goodness, what if I could live in a place like this, you know, with beaches instead of Grey Holland, I guess. Wow. And my parents announced that we were moving to St. Martin. So my dad is from St. Martin in the Caribbean. So I moved there at the age of 10 with my family, um, which was also very challenging because different culture, the kids wow. were quite rough. So I'm really not saying that everything was easy, but um. That's where I kind of did my finished my elementary school. I went to high school there and then I went back to Holland to study because I wanted to go to back to the big city (laughs) instead of living on an island. Like I've always imagined my life to be different stories. So I'm Mirti that lived in Holland, that lived in St. Martin. I'm in Canada now. Like everybody always asks me, why do you do you like that? Because I'm from the Caribbean. Now I'm in the snow, as you described. But that's how I imagined my life. Like, and I continue to do that because I want to go in different places. And Lisa, when I look right now, um, for example, on my birthday, 
I have people wishing me happy birthday in French, you know, from my time here in Quebec. Then I have my St. Martin group. Then I have my people in Holland and in, you know, in all of Europe. When I, in my study time, I was working also, I went to the UK, went to London. I did fashion shows everywhere. So I have friends everywhere. And I always imagine this. And this is kind of my vision also with the coaching that I'm doing right now, that I will have clients like you who become friends all over the world, who I will eventually go and visit, right? Because I'm like, yeah, this the world becomes your family. So how did it go? Because you're asking me specifically, um, I finished my school. I studied tax law. I have a master's degree in tax law. I studied business administration. I did that. I don't know. I I was inspired to go to university by my parents. My parents are mm -hmm. teachers. And they always, the one thing that they told me to do is to study, Lisa. So I'm like this very nerdy girl, always <laughs> studying. I actually <laughs> like it. I still do. <laughs> I would go back to school today. If you would tell me you got to go back to university. <laughs> I would be so happy to do that. Like, I love it. And um, so I studied tax law because I figured that I wanted to work in a business. So my parents are teachers and I was like, well, I had a bigger vision for myself. I think I realized very early on that, you know, if you want to have a certain lifestyle, it will take a certain income. And yeah. if I would be a teacher, for example, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of limited. So I always had a bigger idea. Mm. Now, I was very lucky because my dad always told me, you can be, do, have anything that you want. Now, I think mm. all parents say that, but my dad... Okay really says said that to me mm -hmm. and he always used to tell me look at all those people and he he would point you know like successful people or big uh people that did big discoveries and he would tell me those are regular people just like you and you just have to decide if you want to do it like now looking back I'm like oh my god I had such a fantastic programming and my dad is like an unconscious competent like he lives manifestation he realizes his dreams really so I have that crazy side from him. So when I was 19, my grandfather is actually the one that also gave me something that really, you know how one person can kind of tell you something yeah. in your life that 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 sticks with you? Yeah. Well, he's from Holland. So he's he was a farmer, <laughs> Dutch farmer. And he used to look at me and I like fashion, Lisa, like I like nice bags and shoes. And he would look at me kind of like, mm, another bag, <laughs> mm, another pair of shoes. And he would be like, he has this saying that he said, young people without debts are old people without money. So he was really like, and he, what he meant with that is that you should not spend your money only, but also invest your money. Now I studied tax law, so I have a lot of financial background. I started <laughs> just a bit. And yeah. I kind of said this vision. I always said, why would I retire at 60, you know, which was kind of a traditional age. I was like, it will be really cool if I can be financially independent, meaning that you can pay your bills and kind of live your life. I'm not talking yeah. about being multi, multi-billionaire yeah. or anything like that, but just yeah. being free to then to be able to choose what you really want to do. And I didn't know what that was at that time, but this is something that I consciously thought about Lisa when I was 20. And of course, because of my financial background, I don't know, I guess that kind of helped me. My grandfather, by telling me that the first thing that I did when I started working, I did invest and, you know, I bought a little apartment and I started to build my my financial portfolio from there. Also, understanding how to do that. My dad also had me manage some um, real estate property. So I knew how to collect rents. And I guess now, you know, I continued with that because even right now, like I moved to Canada. And I invested again because you feel very confident because you have that knowledge, right? Like you know how to do it. So that's how I got into being an entrepreneur. Well, that's not the total story. I started working as a tax attorney and um, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. But honestly, Lisa, I didn't really know how to do that because my parents are not entrepreneurs. So that was one of the scariest things that I did when you talk about terror barrier and just deciding to go for it I decided that I wanted to have coffee shops this is something when I was 17 I walked in the airport in St. Martin and there was a kind of little bakery there but not a real coffee shop and there were always lineups and I remember this this is my this is my longest goal manifestation I remember thinking if I would have a location in the airport I don't need marketing because people just always purchase something there oh, so this is the one that <laughs> So I was like, wow, that's just a business that you don't need to market and pay expenses. And um, 
that always stuck with me, Lisa. So even when I started working as a tax attorney, this idea was always there. And um, at that time, we were running a business which was started um, by my partner at that time. And I used to tell him, I want to be an entrepreneur and start a business. And he kind of told me like, yeah, what do you think? That they're going to bring it to you on a silver plate? <laughs> and that's the push that I needed. Because it made me kind of angry. And do you know how an emotion, different emotion can move you in a different direction? And I was like, first angry at him. Yeah. But then I was like, no, he's right. I'm angry with myself. You got to get moving. And I took the decision. And then magic starts to happen, right? Then two weeks after, literally a newspaper came out looking for entrepreneurs at the new airport in St. Martin. And that was my sign. It's like that all connected that I remember at 17 thinking I should have a shop at the airport. And that's how I started my coffee so shop. Your first coffee shop was at the airport? Yes, at the airport. Yeah, I hadn't realized. Yes. Oh, I see exactly as you had sort of seen, like that would be good. And then you created that. Well, I've never met anyone who's very good at manifesting as much as she, because you have, a very, very clear image in your mind and you're very good at being able to focus on that image and believing in that image. So you did your coffee shops for how many years? Uh, about 15 years, I would say. Wow, that long. Yes, and then I got blown away by the hurricane, which pretty much got in between. It was something that I was just running at a certain point. It just became another source of income because I did start to take on other um, projects again because once yeah. it's up and running like I really love to create it but once it runs we're creators right so we always cool. want more and something new and see what else you can do so I still had that as a business but then the hurricane uh, came in St. Martin in 2017 and that's actually what pushed me to Canada so Sylvain um, he's from he's from Canada and even prior to the hurricane, he was kind of proposing to me and saying, you know, maybe one day we'll move to Quebec. And I could see that because I was like, yeah, I could see myself like how I told you, I see myself living in different countries, meeting new people, just having this really full life experience. But I felt a little bit stuck because I was like, yeah, I have my businesses, you have your employees. I am not like eat, love, pray, where you just drop everything that you build up and, you know, <laughs> go and pray in a kibbutz or something like that. Exactly. I, I did want to, I did feel responsibilities also towards, you know, the people that I was working with and just, I mean, you have your home, your mortgage, like you're so invested. My, my ocean was very small. He was already in school. So, you know, it's an upheaval of lives, you know? So I was like, and I was asking myself the question, what am I going to do in Quebec? Because I'm in the French part. Now I'm Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> French is not my first language. And I was like, how will I do that? And what will I do there? Because also as a tax attorney, I won't be able to work here, you know, in my, in my function. You'll be registered. No. no, and the whole education is different. So I would actually yeah. have to go back and study law. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But um, Sylvain was saying that. And then the hurricane came, Lisa. But it's another, I don't, it's so hard when we say it and people think we're crazy. But I didn't ask for a hurricane, but I did ask for something that could push me. Like I was feeling so stuck in St. Martin in the sense that I already had fantastic life, the job that I liked. And I was like, what else? And I just felt that it had to be outside of the island. But then I also had that fear of just leaving everything behind when things are so well, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, but, I, think, yeah. I think when people have a job, it's like a golden cage, right? Because you're so good. You're so comfortable. You know that your salary. At that time, I also had my coffee shop, but I, I was also a manager of an insurance company, which yeah. I stopped at a certain point. Um, but it's those decisions are difficult because we're comfortable. Yeah. So it's very scary to drop all of that and to keep oh. feeling like all the money is yours anyway. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's what prevents us. But, you know, if you go and if you're like free spirit like me, like I couldn't stay where I was because I literally remember telling myself like my spirit is dying here. Like I'm not supposed to do I'm not supposed to just stay here. It would have been easy. I don't know. Yeah. I just felt something like life was pushing me in a different yeah. direction. I have to ask you something about that. You said you felt like you were sort of, you know, not fully living. So I think a lot of people feel that, Nati, but a lot of people just push it away. 
So you didn't push it away. You heard that little voice. There's more that there's more. I need more. I want more. This is great. But actually, there's still more. Why do you think that you listen to that voice and many people don't? What do you think? And you've worked, obviously, you're, you're in this area of helping people manifest and create lives they love, generally. So what do you think is when they hear that, they know, they know lots of people know they could do more, but they go like, nah, and they push it down. And yet you listened, you went, there is more, I'm going to take it. Because you're already successful. You're a very successful businesswoman. And like you said, you chose to almost encourage disruption <laughs> in order to escape the cage. So why? But it didn't. Yeah, you make it sound easy, like you followed that voice. I pushed it away for a little bit as well, because it comes, I think, like everybody else, because we have the fear, because you know what it means, (laughs) that you're going to, you know, disrupt, like you say, your life. I, I do think that I really understand that if you want something new, something else has to end. It's always like this, you know, when you think about like, okay, you get fired, but that firing at the job could be the greatest thing that would have ever happened because you would have never made the move yourself. And I also went through a period that I got divorced, Lisa, which was totally unexpected for me in that time prior. And I think I kind of felt that coming before as well. And I didn't really act on it if I said so I always Mm. say if you feel life is pushing you forward and you're not going and you don't take the decision life takes the decision for you and it comes way harder I don't know if that resonates with you like Mm. that's how it's been in my life like where I felt I had to move but where there was this human fear let's put it like this the universe saying gives you all these opportunities but you're like "Mm, no I'm gonna stay right here because I'm comfortable then life decides for you. And I think with the last one, I when I was in that job, so my divorce and everything happened prior to that. And I had some other things that I was like, oh, I'm feeling this push of life that tells me you got to get out there and <laughs> I don't know, do something else. And I didn't even know what that was. Yeah, that yeah. was the scary part. But um, I felt it push and I was like, I need to take a, I need to take a decision. <laughs> So you were asking me, what's, what's, uh, why did you do it? Because I took a decision. Yeah. You, you made a decision. So going back to them, why did you make a decision? Why, how did you get to that decision? Do you think it was your upbringing? Do you think it was your father's voice in your head? Where did you think that you yeah. made that decision? I thought everything would always work out for me still. Like wow. it always does. Like, I was like, okay, I feel that I need to do this. Um, Life is like this you want. And I always have this picture, right, that I want this different life. Because the job that I was in, Lisa, at that time, the people that work at the company, they worked there for 30 years. So I was seeing all the 30 years celebrations, just to tell you how good the conditions at these companies are. Like, nobody ever leaves. It was also an insurance company. You have an amazing retirement program. Everything is paid for. So you're very, very comfortable. They make it so comfortable that nobody wants to leave. And I think I was just looking at that. And I also saw those anniversary of those people that were like, I was, I came in as the youngest, youngest manager in the office. And there were all these people that were, you know, much older. And I just didn't see that for myself. Was not exciting enough to think then this is going to be my life and I'll just, be here and I and I loved it it was not that but I was like that's not it that's not my story so it was just the vision and this is what I think people need to do because they look at other people's lives and they go like look at that person and they're living their best and they're doing this and yeah but that person is deciding to do that like if you want to go on a vacation you book a ticket in advance and you go, there's people that say for years, I've always wanted to go to Africa. Well, if you've been on a trip prior, you know how to purchase a ticket and to go. You just have to decide to go do it. And it's as simple as that with everything else. And com- committing to the decision. So because yes. making a decision and commitment, I guess, are the same thing. Because you, a decision in itself has the commitment in it. Because you, it isn't a decision if you're not going to follow through. <laughs> so it's a commitment and a decision in one. I'm going to get on that flight, whatever it takes, kind of thing. 
when you when you really take yeah it's a committed decision when you take and i like to say taking it because i'm like you really take it for me it's like i always say it's this magical movement because it's a mental thing mm. you move yourself to that higher frequency where you want to be where what you want wants you you now put yourself yeah. you took that committed decision and then everything starts to fall in place to make that happen. But a lot of people wish for things. So you kind of stay where you are right now and you keep dreaming about it, but you keep attracting more of the same. You didn't take the decision yeah. to go for the higher thing. Does that make sense? Like you, you yeah. flip yeah. it hits I'm, you on a different vibration. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm thinking, um, because obviously I've studied this and you've studied this and some of our listeners may not have studied this. So that's just yeah. like, so I'm trying to, explain it in the in the plainest terms and trying to get you to explain it in the plainest terms um so yeah there's a difference between dreaming and wishing and making a commitment to it happening even though you don't know how um it it's like the 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 what you're going to do has to be written down as a goal and like and bob proctor teaches on a goal card and you then look at that all the time and you, you don't know how you're going to get this. Say you want to move to Australia. You're like, I haven't got the money for a ticket uh, right now. I mean, like two years ago, we were in lockdown, for example, when we couldn't go to Australia. These would all be challenges that need to be overcome. But you start, even like the moment you write it down, you go, I'm going to, I don't know how, but I'm going to find a way. Because then someone could like phone you up and say, we've got a job. And guess what? Then the, the, we're opening up Australia in six months and you can come for your job then. And things change. But if you haven't written it down and committed to whatever, like without knowing it's, I think people feel they have to know how, and that's what stops them. That there are a lot of people are stuck in. Um, I have a lot of friends who have very nice lives, they're very happy um, in their world, but they go like, "I wish I could like start a dog training company, for example." And but they're like, "I, I really don't know anything about business, so I can't do that." So the missing bit for them is they have a desire and they have a nudge to do it. But they don't take any action because the act, missing action is learn how to start a dog training company. That's the bit. And they because they don't know the how, they don't take the steps. I think that's really quite interesting. So because this is the Dream Business podcast, um, what we want to do here is make sure that people realize the, the missing bits when they have a dream, particularly a dream business. But we're using a dream business to help you live your dreams. And um, because I, I I've just done another interview with a lady and I said she was a mad entrepreneur with all sorts of things going on. And I said, why? Why? Because she burned out. Part of her story is how she burned out and changed everything. But she said, because I started all these businesses so I could have this incredible life, but then realized I was so busy working, I didn't have an incredible life. And I think <laughs> all of us start businesses to have an incredible life, and sometimes we get lost on the way. Um, so it's it's so important to like know what you want, which is what you're saying. And you knew what you wanted, and you listened, and you took action. I mean, literally in that order. You knew what you wanted, you listened to, you actually took action on it, and then moved forward which means that you then eventually ended up in this area as a profession. So after your coffee shops and you moved to Canada, you didn't, did you open another coffee shop in Canada? Yes, I did. did. I actually, yeah. because that's what's something that I, um, that's my practical side because everything yeah. got blown away, but I was able to salvage some of the uh, coffee shop materials, etc. Yeah. I said to Sylvain, let's put it in a, in a container and let's bring that to Canada. But the funny part was, that because we were already prior thinking about it, I had already looked at it, opened my mind to it. And there was a place that I visited, which at the time I was asking the gentleman, he said, it's not available. And now I just went back to him and I said, listen, I just got struck by a hurricane. My container is coming <gasps> and I need your location. And he said, yes. Do you see what I mean? So wow. that's why it's so important because you don't know how the universe is going to line it up. And this is exactly what you were saying, Lisa. Like if you don't have a picture of what you want, mm -hmm. the universe can put the things in your way <laughs> to help yeah. you realize you don't need to know the how it's yeah. going to come. And this is where people get lost because I didn't know in the end that I would open the coffee shop there. Right. But because I had opened my mind to it prior and mm -hmm. saw where it could be, that materialized a couple of years later because that was just a couple of, I didn't know a hurricane was coming and that I would be pushed away and would need that space. Mm -hmm. You see how, mm -hmm. and this is this magical thing in my life where everything always lines up. This is where they always say connect the dots, but it's also because 
I put out to the universe what I would like to see happening in my life. So I know I'm going to be traveling and visiting all my clients. So it's interesting how you said, okay, after the coffee shop. So I did open a coffee shop here. Yeah. Um, then unfortunately we had the pandemic. And yeah, of course. Yeah, so I was a little bit, I was like, oh my God, brick and mortar businesses. I'm so tired of it. I got blown away by a hurricane, lost my businesses. Yeah. Now with the pandemic, it's closed. And I was like, I think the universe is giving me a sign. Like that. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> the coffee shop. And yes, I had to be very strong. I had to sell it in a time where all small businesses were shutting down. But I just held on to the vision that I would sell it. And I did sell it. So that was also a really great, something really great for me because I had to really work hard on it in my mind because I got scared that I wouldn't sell it. And I just kept pushing that thought and saying, no, yeah. the right person will come. And that happens. That's just for me. I mean, we all get tested. It's like, how strong are you? Like, how much do you want it? Are you able to ignore all the signs that are telling you that it's not going to happen and still just focus on the end results you know and this takes takes training and the more you understand the process because you've got to first like you said we've we've studied this if you don't know how the results are created um and you're talking about goals and just having a goal card i see a lot of people doing that which mm -hmm. is good because the laws always Stop. work but yeah. um understanding really how the mind works and how humans create results is just so helpful because you know that there are going to be periods that you're not going to see anything because <laughs> yeah. that's what freaks people out. People think it's not going to happen. They think about something for a little while and then they let it go. Exactly. If you would only, I, I mean, there's this, this, this video going viral on TikTok again. Maybe you've seen it too. It's by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Tracy, who says, take a card, write down um, thing, things you would like to do. Um, uh, look at your list, feel the ones that jumps out of you and, or the one that would have the biggest impact if it would materialize in 24 yeah. hours, something like this, put a circle around it. Put that on a card, make a little plan, take some action steps, do it every day. All of you will be rich. <laughs> and it has me smiling because that is the process. Yes. But what happens, and we know that, and that's what you're telling me. Well, first of all, people just don't believe that they could ever get it. So they yeah. think about it. It stays a wish, yeah. but they don't decide to take steps towards it. Because first of all, they say, I don't know what steps I need to take. I don't know what to do, but that's not true. You always know the first step. You don't, might not know the whole way, but if you say, okay, I got to start a business. I mean, we can come up and say, okay, Lisa, you want to start a business. Okay, probably we need to think about the shape of the business first. What yeah. type of business would you like to start? And you start from there. And yeah. then you're like, okay, I probably need to make a business plan because I need to see how I'm going to make this work. And then you yeah. open a bank account. I mean, the steps kind of show themselves because if you don't know, and I started a coffee shop like this, I had never started a business. I went to the chamber of commerce and I asked, how do I do this? <laughs> and they good. gave me forms and yeah. that's how you go. And I think because I've started things and just did stuff. And this is the being like wondrous, like a child that people talk about. You just got to be curious and yeah. just say, okay, Everything is figure outable, you know, like <laughs> yes, yes, I love that when I get yes, there, yes. I'll ask yes. another question. And by that time I will know, but we're scared to do that. It's really so when we don't see the whole way of getting there, most people just don't move. And honestly, most people never put up a bigger goal than their current situation. That's, I mean, that's even just the first, first step. Do you have a bigger vision for yourself than just, you know, the current life that you're living. Most people don't. They just have this vision that they're going to stay at the same job, work there, then they'll retire because they've been told you, you stay there because then you get a good retirement plan. So they see themselves in that job till yeah. 60, 65, whatever retirement age. So of course, they're never going to do anything outside of that. Yeah, yeah. So, so you closed your coffee shop and you have obviously... I sold it. Personal yeah. development, much most of your life, by the sounds of things. And it sounds like actually your father was 
in, in basically giving you personal development as a child as well. And he had a great mindset. So you had what we call a positive mental attitude all the way through. That was one of your secret sources. And, and knowing you, as I know, it's obvious to me, um, you know, and I've only known you a little while, but I'm sure I bet you came out of like as a child. I bet you were like that. So that's delightful. Um, so you you then chose a quite difficult path, which is to actually then go and work with people to help them. Um, well, how would, what would you say your mission is regarding helping people? What you you give me your mission statement for your work as it is right now with Bob Proctor's work and uh, Illumini Institute. If I said that correctly, yes, that right? it's illuminate. It's illuminate. It's like illuminate. illuminate. Sorry, sorry. Illuminate, illuminate without the T. It yes. actually means those who shed light. Well. I and that's basically what we do because light is just awareness and sharing awareness and showing people um, how we literally create our results. That means I give them the tool to change their life. And I like to think of myself at that little connector <laughs> between you and your the best version of you because you know once you figure out that you can create the life of your dreams. And this is what you're helping people with, yes. with Dream Academy, whether it's the business of their dreams that goes along with everything else, right? Like yes. dream, um, I don't know, uh, health, be in good health, yes. love. Yes. It's all connected. There is, this works for everything. The dream and I, life. Yes, yes the, the dream, dream life. life. I think, yeah, I think that's the yes. difficult thing in what we do is that, you know, because when I say to people, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, I make you better. So everything gets better. That's too general. <laughs> Because people want to have a solution for a problem that they have. And this is the difficult part for me because I like to see myself as magic. So for me, it's more, I'm coming from the positive side. <laughs> like I want to magic you, Lisa, like you're dreaming and I want to magic your dream so that the dream becomes a reality. Yes. This, But I, I realize that when I speak and I see this on my post, so this is interesting. So I've tried to change my, that when I formulate a heavy feeling, more people react to it than when I come and say, oh, let's be magical. And people don't believe that. So <laughs> it bounces, I mean, it bounces off them. They don't get yes. it. It's almost too like fairies and pixie yes. dust. Yes. yes. They're like, oh, here goes this girl with her. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have to get into the pain in other words you have to kind of go in deeper and sort of for people to 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 hear the message I mean and eventually the result is the same but I can tell you Lisa I did not get into this well there was this period in time when I was in St. Martin when I kind of was asking myself it's funny that when I look back this was before I studied you know about Proctor and everything I just did this intuitively and everything I study is just kind of nice because I can match this to what I did. And I'm like, yeah, this is like, now I really understand how I did it. Um, I was actually just thinking, well, but what would I do? Because I didn't, I mean, I studied tax law, but I knew I didn't want to be somebody's like advisor and finance. I'm very good at it, but it's not what I love. Like I love people. I did insurance, you know, I did all the boring stuff. And I was like, that's so not me. And I was like, but what else can I do? You know, because we really also think that we can just do what we studied for or whatever, what we've mastered. But technically you can do anything, but you already limit yourself a little bit like, okay, but I studied this and, you know, you check what you did. And I was like, what would I be able to do? And I was like, that's the wrong way. What would I really love? And I started thinking like this. I was like, oh, it would be nice. <laughs> I always used to say to my mom and she used to laugh at me that, at that time. I just want to earn money being myself, whatever that means. Wow. And yeah. wow. Well, I used to do a lot of modeling and I was like, that's earning money, just smiling. But I was like, no, it's more than that. I want it to be for who I am more, not on the outside, but on the inside. So I really started thinking about that. And I spoke to my brother, who's like a marketer and a researcher. And I was explaining to him and he was like, yeah, it sounds like you want to be like an influencer. Right. He came with mm. that. Mm -hmm, and I was like, mm -hmm. that's interesting. But I was like, yeah, but I don't want it to be like, I don't know, at that time you had the Kardashians and just, yeah. you know, um, the stereotype of looking good. And I was like, no, that's not what I want. So he put me on that. And I remember going on my computer and Googling who were the most influential persons. And I put in history because I didn't want the modern type of mm -hmm. influencers. I did that. So I'm like, oh, I'm on to something, right? Like universe is guiding. So I type that in and I see all males like Jesus, Buddha, 
I mean, a whole list. The only yeah. females I think that came up were like Madame Curie. She was like this chemist and me in chemistry. Yeah. Like in I didn't, yeah. yes, yeah. I didn't study that. So I was like, that's not me. Yeah. And then I looked and there was Mother Teresa. And I, my heart started beating and I was like, oh, but she lived, you know, in such dire circumstances. Mm. I was like, I was like, that's not my dream life, right? Because I have a dream life. So I, I just did, chook, computer closed. That's it. <laughs> I went, okay, that didn't work. Yes. So I was like, that didn't. But then this funny thing happened. So I didn't know all of this. So that was the first time that I started to sing. Then I had a girlfriend in France. I, I, I started already to ask the universe, put me on my path, if that makes sense. After mm -hmm. the hurricane, I ended up here. I had a lot of time to do meditation. I had some crazy shifts in awareness because I was really consciously doing that. And also because I had time to think. I was, you have to understand that and you can't really, because after a hurricane, when you've lost everything, like let's say material stuff, it rebalances you. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Because you're kind of, after a hurricane, the first question that you have is, is everybody okay? And you literally feel, thank God I'm alive. Yeah. It's very that's humbling. Yes, that's what yes. matters. The other yes. things become just possessions. It's like we're all, we yes. get to live on. Yeah. Yes. So I was literally pushed away from St. Martin, came to Canada. Um, I had a year really of, well, it's very difficult because you're fighting for everything. Like it starts only at hurricane. Like my business, I had to go to court to wow. clean all of that for my businesses with my employees. You have to deal with insurance. It's not fun. Like it's a year. I mean, it's really hard work to kind of try to save what you already had. And yeah. you just lose a lot. It's very depressing. People are very sad. They don't know how they have to restart. You know, it's like, a, yeah. and I was here and I couldn't really do anything because, and I, and I, because my business was in St. Martin and I had to do that all online and solving, but physically here, I didn't have the energy. I was in kind of this lower energy because after the storm, like you feel a little bit sad and, and I was sure. like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, I just better use this time to study and meditate and let's see what happens. So I started listening intensively again to Abraham Hicks, who I really love doing all my meditation, like kind of picking back up because I was like, I got to manifest something different. Like something is happening. And because I was already kind of aware, I know law of polarity when something really bad happens to you, you got to switch it to the best. Right. So I focused all my attention and then Lisa, everything just started to fall in place. I mm -hmm. went on a cruise with Abram Hicks. I don't know, even know how that happened. I met people there. Then I heard about Bob Proctor. I didn't know Bob Proctor. Oh, yeah. Started watching videos from him. And then I remembered him from The Secret. I was like, oh, he was the guy with the white hair. You know? <laughs> but only that. then, like, I didn't, I didn't remember yeah. him. And I started listening to some of his students. And what really blew me away, because I already know inside of me what manifesting is. Like, I've been, my friends were always like, you're the little witch, mm -hmm. you know, you always yes. get what you want. Yes. But he, I, when I was listening to videos of people that worked with him, now always talk to people that, that have done it. <laughs> yeah. Results are the name of the game. I saw people that worked with him and I heard what they were saying and I just felt inside of me. I think he's got the system, whatever it is. Yeah. And this is what I want to know. I wanted to know it for me, Lisa. At that point, I wasn't even thinking. I just wanted to get yeah. better at manifesting understand life like we all want to understand life understand the purpose that was pulling me inside like this very strong yeah. pull like I got pulled to Canada because of that right because I was asking for more my spirit spirit was really telling me not this job you got to go do something else and then all of this just came on my path and um coming back to the mother Teresa story that was really funny um, one of my girlfriends uh, who lives in France, she always calls me because I'm always helping all my friends, right? Because I know about divorce because I'm divorced. I know about finances. I know how to start a business. So I'm like the go-to person if you have a question. It's like, oh, so <laughs> and she was like, I'm sorry, I call you when I have a problem. I'm like, that's fine. And I talked with her and she actually told me, and I said, you know what? I said, because she lived in St. Martin with me at the time that the book, The Secret, came out. And when I read the book, The Secret, Lisa, I remember thinking very clearly, oh, so it is a real thing that I do. Really? At that point, yes. you recognized your own yes. natural ability and habits. That's yes. fascinating. And I wow. gave that book to all my girlfriends, like, read this, and then wow. you can do it. 
And my girlfriend, she remembered that. And we were practicing. And I, I was doing silly stuff. I was like, okay, let's manifest a watch. I got the watch in two weeks. Let's manifest. <sighs> and my girlfriends were like, how do you do that? And I was trying to explain. But I didn't even really understand how I did. Like, I know the feeling that I have. Like, how I tell you, I know yeah. what the desires. I can recognize. It's a different, I don't know. It's a different feeling inside of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I wasn't able to explain it. And I let it go. I was manifesting. Yeah. But I remember, but when I had, when she called me and she was one of my friends at that time. And she said, because she was doing her own spiritual journey. And she said, she spoke to somebody that told her, you got to go back to the year, I don't know, 2005 or something. You were on a journey and you have to continue that. And she said, Mirti, I'm calling you because you were teaching me how to do the secret at that time. And I was like, I was kind of calculating. I was like, yeah, that's true. And I said, guess what? I said, your timing is amazing. I'm about to start a course with Bob Proctor. Mm -hmm. And I think he has the way, but you have to wait because I want to first, like, I'm always very careful about what I recommend. Like, I want to know that it works, right? Like, you don't want to have yeah, people yeah. invest and it's not yeah, the yeah. right thing. So I said, you have yeah. to wait. I'm going to do it first myself. And if you want after, you can join me. And I sent her a little video of Bob Proctor. And she sent me a text back and she said, she's French. She's like, oh, merci. Yes, Bob Proctor. I don't know. But he said, for me, you're my sexy Mère Thérèse. That's what she wrote me. Mother Teresa. You're sexy said, Mother Teresa. <laughs> I didn't make the link. I didn't make the link at that time. So Lisa, I like to ask for signs. We can ask for signs from the universe. Yeah. But the thing is, you got to be prepared to receive signs, right? Not everybody's open-minded to that, or they will say it's coincidence. But I always ask for three times. Well, it's the Holy Trinity, but it's also one time is just once. Two yeah, times yeah. It's coincidence. Three times it's... Three times. It's a sea law yeah. as well, right? Like it's this law, like three times yeah. it's it's fixed. It's be so that. I didn't make the connection between the two, but then I went to Bob Proctor because I decided to go to California. I've been raised also by my parents that say, be careful. There's so many people out there. It can be dangerous. Be sure it's not a scam. Is it yeah. a pyramid? Blah, blah, blah. And yes, I was yes, like, yes, yes, yes. I need to go. It's the same thing. I went on law of attraction because I wanted to meet the persons and I went to Bob Proctor because I wanted to see people and not just YouTube videos because you don't even know if that's real, right? Like I'm sure yeah. listeners will resonate with that because we've been yeah. raised and it's true that there are people promoting things that are not good for us. Yeah. So you do yeah. have to be careful. So I went there. I was blown away. I spoke to consultants and people that worked with Bob Proctor all over the world. I got to meet with him personally as well. I got to ask him a question and they were like, 300 people in the room and you know just if you could ask a question I knew I would get the question Lisa like because I had a question you manifested that yeah yes and I got the question and I asked him a question for St. Martin at that time because we had just it was right before the pandemic and I, I said to Bob Proctor okay if what you're teaching is the way you know, how will I get into people's subconscious mind? How will they decide to go with me? Which was a very important question because that's still the question today. You can be an amazing teacher, which I know you are. Um, yeah. How do people believe you? How do they take that leap with you? So that, that still remains the question, like how will they recognize it? Yeah. And I was asking, how can I use this for my country? Because we had a hurricane that was very traumatic. People are still very low energy because I was able to feel that. And he told me law of polarity. He said something that's a little bit bad can only be a little bit good, medium bad, medium good. And then something like a hurricane that could be, you know, the way forward. And you know what he ended with? So he told me all of that. He was teaching and he said, you can be the mother Teresa for your country. Oh, I get goosebumps still even now. And I felt this rush. If you talk about Kindalini energy or something like that, it went boom. And I even said to Bob Proctor, because I was so in that moment, which was a little bit embarrassing for me after I went, oh, well, you uh, have to it because my girlfriend in France, she sent me this text and she said, who is Bob Proctor? But you're my mother, Therese. But I mean, I'm here telling Bob Proctor that she said, oh, bless. I'm sure he didn't mind. No, 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 no. So that was really my sign that I was in the right place, because when I was there, I was asking the universe, OK, you got to give me a sign. If this is good, because I'm on the path of light, Lisa, I want to help people. So it's very important for me that if I make a promise to you, 
yeah. that we're gonna that it's a real promise you know so this is this is the basis of everything it's got to be the truth so i was just asking the universe is this the right place so i got all the confirmation of that i was sitting with people that healed themselves a lady healed herself from from cancer not from hearsay she told me the story in person crying so it's yeah. real you know because wow. you never know so i came back couldn't sleep for two months really saying to Sylvain um, was asking me what's wrong with you and you said and I told him you don't understand I've been given the key to life like keys to the kingdom and I wanted to call everybody and I did that Lisa and that was and Sylvain was watching me like mm, you shouldn't do that but you want so much to share it with everyone because everybody around us has a problem like I know I mean Everybody would like something to be better, even if it's just a little better, a little better health, a little easier, you know? So I was like, if I can share this, I will make everyone happy. But then I very quickly realized that was not the way to go because people just think you're crazy. Like I always may think of Jesus that was coming with the message. And yes, they, exactly, the same thing. And they killed him for his message. You know, yes. they think he was crazy, but they, they killed how, him for it. How him. sad is that? But that's how it is. And it also made me realize how many good people and opportunities I probably passed on because of my program of the be careful, right? So I say that when I talk to people because... I still want people to study me. Like I have that inside of me. So this, this coaching thing, Lisa, actually came from wanting to understand life. And that's still what I'm doing every day. I'm doing it for me so that I can be a good human, understand life and contribute to humanity. And then my enthusiasm just gets so big that it pours over. It does. Uh, if everyone watching her enthusiasm <laughs> really pours over, we're like, okay, okay, we got it, we got it. Yeah. And um, I repeat, yeah, repeat, you're very repeat. passionate about yes. what you do. Yes. Very passionate. And yeah. I just teach from the heart and I kind of trust that the universe yeah. will guide me, that there's this purpose, right? Because like, I know what I want. Mm. I don't know how it's going to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it but you will. Trust, you, have faith. you also have faith over fear. So you have, faith. and when I say faith, well, again, for the listeners, I don't mean necessarily religious faith. You don't have to believe in any particular religion. Um, it's having faith that it will work out for you. There's a different kind of faith. And I would suggest anyone listening, just a really good starting point. You could go and work with Murti, but if you don't go and work with Murti, another good starting point is to go to Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and read that book, um, as that was Bob Proctor's Bible. Um, and he studied it for his entire life and and he he died in his 80s and the man you know he knew every word on every page um and you have to read it and reread it and try to understand it. it's not like you read it to learn the book you read it to understand the book and see what was really meant um there's magic in that book there's wisdom of all life in that book you know there's universal law in that book and it is the place to start um because we we are we are we do deserve better Marty is one of the people I hold up who who got it right from an early age and got the faith and has lived by faith and has therefore trusted her a vision can come to reality and has made that happen because she believed that she would um other people had visions but they didn't believe so it doesn't work you can't just have the goal you've got to have the faith because the faith means you stand there and you look for signs you look for answers you look for the how so absolutely fantastic and and what is more wonderful is that you've now committed your life at the moment you now have this wonderful institute where you help others discover and you hold their hand which is because you need to have your hand held you know you, you can read the book like I recommend everyone go read Think and Grow Rich but it may not be enough you need someone to so well, I don't know what that means or I'm still not able to do that and you need someone to hold your hand and uh, so I think Matty has a wonderful business and she also lives her dreams because you, you love it don't you you love it so your business is not only you actually love doing it <laughs> You know, Lisa, I could talk about this all day. That's one of the things, right? This enthusiasm, it it, it makes you yeah. like over bubble. I actually have to pay attention that I pull myself back a little bit. And we always laugh yes. about that. Like Sylvain teases me about that. <laughs> I could talk about this all day. I sleep, I dream, I eat this. Like it's my life. And I think that's what it is with awareness that a lot of people don't understand. It's not just yeah. a little program that you do. Like when you come into my community, into my life, it's a lifestyle. It's like you're choosing magic. 
<laughs> that's really I, I vouch for that guys I've been I've, I've worked with her for a year and, and it is magic and she is wonderful merci I have to let you go we have been talking for ages and ages and ages so bless you thank you so much for your time um is there any are there any last thoughts you have for the viewers you know regarding putting themselves into a future that they, they create a life they love yeah, I think one of the first things that I would say, and I think you said that as well, it's to work on your faith because a lot of people are trying to manifest without faith and you need to have an understanding of that. And, you know, that we can leave that here in the middle because it's it's it sounds um, so difficult because I know people are going to ask what is faith, but that's why you do have to study because yeah. real faith, like belief in something only happens true knowledge and understanding. And that's, you know, Bob used to say that nobody wants to study. So you got to join Lisa, you know, with her <laughs> academy. Yeah, because she knows about this material. It's yeah, all yeah. about the knowledge because it is all mindset. And what is yeah. that mindset? That means a mindset to faith instead of fear. Because scared people, it. yeah, scared people don't do the things that people with courage do. And that's all the difference mm -hmm. there is in life with everything uh, yeah. so go dream with lisa dream. and yeah i i can i can help you have i i help yeah. you create the dream business me actually helps to get the dream mindset <laughs> <laughs> we work together yeah. amazing thank oh, you so much thank you it, so much and keep it, spreading your light um I see you're shining your light you're doing an amazing job and we're all on the same journey because I think once you know, you understand life, you know that it's not just magic because people think that magic is just like a luck, but yeah. you understand that it's something that you can just have and that it's law so that it repeats itself. It's not a one-time yeah. thing. Yeah. And yeah. this is what you're yeah. doing also with your um, create, helping people create their dream business. It's yeah. fantastic, Lisa. You're making this world a better place. So thank you for that. And that's also why you are with me. Because I look for people that want to spread this love because that's what it is. And just make this a better place for all of us to live in. Imagine everyone happy. This would be a great yes. world. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Now I used to walk around and, and see people and, and have a lot of friends, you know, who just, their lives are not the way they, they have. Oh, I wish I could. I, the saddest thing is I meet someone, they go, I wish I could have been. And, you know, and it's never too late. You could be in your 60s or 70s. You can still go do some version of their dream. It's never too late. But, you know, people are saying that to me sometimes in their 20s and 30s. You know, I'm 25 now. It's too late because I studied physics and I wanted to be a, something else. You know, it's never too late. So that was what motivates me is I used to hate that. And I used to hate being told you have to go and do this thing that you don't want to do. We are here to live lives of joy and we have to find a way. And you and I are here to hold people's hand on that path until they do. Isn't and on that, that note. Thank oh. you for having me, Lisa. Thank you, listeners. And um, have a super, super, super magical day. Create it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Dream Team Academy podcast. Tune in for our next podcast soon, where you too can find out how you can help your business dreams come true. 